Assalamu alaikum. In this lab, we'll be doing our experiment number five, which is designing of the D for FAP. And here we'll be using both DSEH and Microwind. Since we'll be doing the schematics of the D for FAP as shown here. And uh, here, if you see, we, we will be using five NAND gates, and one of them is an inverter, and then the inputs A and the clock, and then we have the output Q and the Q bar. So let's design this in our DSCH. So let's open DSCH first. Okay. Uh, the first thing we'll do is change the boundary. Here we'll be using 0 0.6 microns. So select the select the boundary to be CMOS 06 and open. And also uh, we'll have to save the file. I'm saving it here as DFF. Okay. Now uh, let's start placing the NAND gates. Here we're using two input NAND gates, so select that from the symbol library. And place them accordingly. Now, uh, since this NAND gate is to be converted into an inverter, so we'll use the wire here to tie both the inputs to one input. So here we go, we have an inverter. Now, after all the NAND gates are placed, we'll place the inputs. So let's start with A, for which we'll be using a button from the symbol library. <coughs> and change the name also to A. Then the inputs here would be connected to the clock. So choose the clock from the symbol library and place it. And then once the inputs are placed, we'll place the outputs. We have Q and the Q bar, so we'll need two of these. And change the name. This will be Q. And this will be Q bar. Once all of that is placed, we'll do the connections. So choose this, choose the wire from here, the top, and connect the inputs. A and A would be connected to this inverter, and the inverted A would be taken as input for this NAND kit. Then the, the inputs here are connected to the clock. And then, the output of this NAND gate is taken as the input for the next uh, NAND gate. And the same goes for this. And we'll connect the outputs, this one to the Q and this one to Q bar. And also the output Q here is taken as the input for this NAND gate. So we'll do that. And also, also the same for this taken as the input for this NAND gate so connect it okay so there we go we have our completed schematics for our deep flip log don't forget to save it and now we'll be generating the symbol of this deep flip log so go to file and select schema to new symbol and make sure that the name of this is the same as the schematic file that you saved as uh, so this is the same and also make sure that it's in the same location once all that is done, I click on OK. Next, we'll create the Verilog file for this. So, go to File again and select Make Verilog File. And then, uh, okay, here we have the Verilog code. We have the NAND gates, the output and the input. And also, to also make sure here uh, the name of the Verilog file is also the same as the, the schematic file that you saved. Once all that is checked, select Update. Click on Update Verilog and then OK. And also save it so now we'll be generating the layer of this deep flip flop so we will move on to micro wind let's go to micro okay so here also firstly we'll change the 
found E to 0 0.6 microns. So choose CMOS 06 and also save it. Okay, now before we do generate the layout, we have to compile the Verilog file first. So go to compile at the top here and select compile Verilog file and uh, choose the file and open. And then compile it. Uh, we have no errors, so we are good to go. So go back to editor and there we go. We have our layout of the deep flop. Um, to calculate the area of this layout, we can measure the height and the width of this layout. So you can do that by selecting the scale here, the tool, and align it, drag it to the edges. Oh, sorry. And I choose, choose the scale again. Okay, yeah, this should be okay. And then to the edge. Uh, we can zoom out okay so we have 54 micrometers and uh, for 51.6 micrometers these these are the uh, the width and the height of the layout so you can multiply and get the area of the layout um, before we move on to simulating we'll have to make sure that a doesn't toggle faster than the clock so let's check mm, let's make the clock a bit faster Let's have it at 2.4 and then we check the A, A's clock settings. Um, it's at 0 0.9 which is faster than the clock. Let's let's make it double of the clock so 4.8. We have to change it here also. And then assign. Um, and now, now we'll run simulation for this. So, and as we know, in the flip flop, the effect of the A input condition is only copied to the output queue when the clock input is active. And so, but when when the clock turns off, it would take it would store the previous output until the next time the clock turns on. So here, if you see, once once the clock turns on, our input is zero, so our output is also zero. And then once the clock turns off, this, even though the input has gone on to be 1, the, the output would store the previous output. So it will remain at 0 until the next time the clock turns on. So the next time when the clock turns on, the, the input was, is, is at 1. So this will be transferred onto the output which is also at 1. And then when it goes to zero, it will retain the previous output so it stays at one and, and so on. And also, we'll see that the Q bar should be inverting the Q. So when the Q is zero, the Q bar is one. When Q is one, the Q bar is low. Uh, when it's low, it's high it's, and so on. So uh, our layout seems to be working well. And also, if you see, if you want to get measure the uh, the power distribution by this layout you'll see in the bottom right here p equal to 0 0.717 milliwatts this is the power distribution value and that is all for our lab 5 thank you